celebrate every occasion with this delicious peppermint overload cake. An easy cake recipe combining the flavour of chocolate with peppermint candies. It's a perfect dessert to serve your family and guests, leaving you loaded with a minty flavour topped with luscious mint chocolate and smothered in a mint spiked chocolate coating. Cooking Company will take you step by step into making this melt in your mouth peppermint overload cake. To make this delicious looking cake, just put 250 grams of butter into a bowl and whisk away. Now we add our icing sugar. 400 grams in total, but we're going to add a little bit at a time. This part of the process is very important. As we whisk away, we want to make sure that the consistency is just right, light and fluffy, so that the icing does not ooze out when we put it into our cake. Now we're going to split this mixture half-half into two bowls. First bowl, we add some mint extract. We can add a few generous drops of that and make sure it's mixed in really, really well. In our second bowl, we're going to add some red food colouring and some cocoa powder. Mix that together, then we add our red buttercream icing and our white buttercream icing into food piping bags. Starting with the red, we're going to swirl it on the top of our chocolate cake layer, making a spiral pattern, making sure to leave gaps in between for the white mint flavoured buttercream icing. Now we're going to add a second layer of our cake on top and cover the entire cake in our red buttercream icing. We're going to just smooth it over using a spatula all the way around the edge. Next comes our candy. We're going to break the hook off the end and we're going to put the straight parts all the way around the edge of our cake. Now get your buttercream icing and make a stripy pattern on some cling film. Now very carefully roll it up and place that inside a food piping bag. Now if we snip the edge off, we should be able to pipe that stripy buttercream and decorate the top of our cake. Then why not add a few pieces of broken candy using the remainder of our broken candy canes? Look at that, something right out of Wonderland. How about a slice of minty gorgeousness? What's the best answer if you have to choose between red velvet and a brownie? Well, we'd say both, because you can now bake a red velvet brownie all by yourself with simple ingredients. Cooking Company will take you one step at a time into making this easy to make and delicious red velvet brownie. First, we get a mixing bowl and we add 200 grams of softened or room temperature butter. Give that a whisk and now we're going to add some sugar to the butter which is also the same amount, 200 grams. You can use an electric whisk if you want to make things a bit quicker. Then we add two eggs. We can add them at the same time, we don't need to add them one at a time. Now this whisking process will take a little bit longer so we want to make it nice and smooth. Next comes our food colouring which of course is going to be red. You could choose any colour. You could do blue, purple, green velvet brownie. Why not? Now to that we add the vanilla extract which gives it a lovely flavour. You can buy some brownie mixture ready made from the supermarket. So we'll just sift a bag of that in to get rid of any lumps and then we'll give that a whisk too. We want the texture to be really, really smooth and shiny like this. So that that's our batter ready to go in the oven. Before we do that, we're going to just steal a little bit of that butter and put it into a piping bag because we're going to be using that later. This is going to be an absolutely magical dessert. So now we put our red velvet brownie mixture into our baking tray. Onto some baking paper preferably because that helps it to not stick to the tray. So generously putting that in but don't fill it right to the top, smoothing it over because we're going to need that space later for our cream cheese topping. Now while that's bubbling away we're going to make our cream cheese layer. So we add cream cheese to a mixing bowl and give that a whisk. Next we're going to add 200 grams of sugar just like before, whisk that together. The next thing that's going to happen is we're going to add egg white, egg white only, 100 grams. That's approximately three to four eggs. 
depending on the size. We want to whisk it till it's really smooth and shiny, add some vanilla extract once again and there we have our cream cheese layer ready. So now our red velvet brownie is baked and ready out of the oven so we're going to add a nice big healthy dollop of cream cheese frosting on top and we're going to spread it out nice and evenly. Now this should fill to the top of your baking tray. Smooth it over just like that. Now here comes the fun part. We get to decorate. We're doing a nice spiral pattern. We're using the red velvet brownie mixture to make a pretty pattern. Now if you want, you can get a stick or something like a toothpick to swipe across the piping that you've already put on there. And look, we have a beautiful looking sort of Charlotte's Web. Now we bake that at a slightly lower temperature, 150 degrees for approximately 15 minutes. And there you have it. Red velvet brownie. Amazing. Go on then, give us a slice. Mmm. There is nothing as refreshing as a juicy watermelon. And today we're going to be turning this popular fruity flavor into a wiggly jiggly watermelon jello cake that will perfectly satisfy your taste buds. Don't you worry, it's super easy and cooking company will guide you in putting this deliciousness together. So let's get started. To make this, we add 350 millilitres of water to a pot on the stove and 200 grams of jello. Jello is the term they use in America to describe gelatin. We give that a stir, let it all dissolve and heat up nicely. Next, we get a small glass bowl, which we lightly coat in oil. Now that will make sense later on and you'll see why we've done that. Then we get a bigger glass bowl filled with iced water, place a smaller bowl inside that one and pour in our hot jello mixture. Now the aim here is to try and part cool the jello mixture so that it half sets but not completely. We're going to also add 100 millilitres of room temperature water just to help the cooling process along and stir it, keep stirring it until it cools down and starts to thicken. Now comes the fun part. We're going to add in some chocolate chips. You see this is starting to look a bit like a watermelon, isn't it? This is going to be the seeds of the watermelon. So we stir those in, evenly spread throughout the mixture. Then we're going to pour that mixture into another glass bowl, which will then be put in the fridge to set the jelly. We're going to cover this with some food film preservation, otherwise known as cling film. We're going to just cover the jelly itself and we're going to stick that in the fridge to chill for one hour. Meanwhile, we'll get 200 millilitres of milk, five grams of gelatin, 60 grams of sweetened condensed milk and put that together in a jug. Give it a mix. Did you know that the French were the first to use gelatin in cooking? Oh, we're going to add our jello, 100 grams, water, 80 millilitres, give it a good stir and add a drop of food colouring. We're going to use green food colouring because this is going to make our green layer for our watermelon. Now while you're compiling this you can actually use a real watermelon for reference to make sure you get all the layers in the right place. Right, we're going to add 100 millilitres of a yoghurt drink. You can buy this ready made from the shop or simply mix some milk or water together with yoghurt. Stir that all in so it becomes a kind of cloudy green liquid. Our red jello is ready! Fantastic! We pour the yoghurt gelatin mixture on top of the jelly. And when we've done that, we're going to stick our bowl back in the refrigerator so the white layer can set. When it's set, we're going to add our third and final layer. That's our green coloured yoghurt gelatin layer. This one is the thinnest of the three layers. Look at that colour against the white yoghurt mixture. Fantastic! They would chill that again for one hour. We'll then fill a large glass bowl with warm water and take our gelatin mixture out of the fridge and stick it in the warm water for a few minutes, just swishing it around. What we want to do is loosen the sides of our gelatin cake. That way it will be much easier when we want to get it out of the bowl. So here comes the final part. We're going to stick it on a plate upside down, give it a shake and there you go. It slides off nicely due to that little layer of oil that we put on earlier. Fancy a squirt of cream on top? 
and even a little decoration why not look at that so refreshing for those summer garden parties wouldn't mind a slice would you Okay, let's have a go at raspberry chocolate mousse cake. Tip 250 grams of chocolate cake mix into a large bowl. Add 3 eggs, 30 milliliters of oil, 50 milliliters of milk, and blend together, either by hand or with an electric whisk like this one. It makes the job much easier. Pour your mixture into a greased and lined cake tin. It should be thick and goopy like ours. Smooth out the surface with a spatula. Then bake at 180 degrees for half an hour. Meanwhile, pour 500 milliliters of whipping cream into a bowl and whisk for several minutes. Then add 50 grams of icing sugar and mix that through too. Place to one side. Melt 300 grams of dark chocolate, then add your whipped cream in, whisking the mixture together spoonful by spoonful. Then portion it into a plastic piping bag like this. Take your chocolate cake and use a circle tin to cut out two circular shapes from it. Remove the excess. Cover the shape with a plastic mould of the same size and add a layer of fresh raspberries on top. Then pipe your chocolate mousse all over the fruit, making sure to completely cover it. Then use a spoon to carefully smooth out the surface of your mousse. Refrigerate for 30 minutes. Then it's time to decorate the top with shredded chocolate. And of course, some more fresh raspberries. For a final detail, let's add some gold leaf. Perfect. Now you can sit back and enjoy a delicious treat. Mirror chocolate cake with strawberry jelly and white chocolate mousse is a cake with different layers and a delicacy for chocolate lovers. Filled with white chocolate mousse, strawberry jelly and a layer of chocolate cake on the inside, this cake is best for birthdays and special occasions. Cooking Company will take you one step at a time into creating this mouth-watering cake. First, we add our strawberries, 300 grams, 20 grams of sugar, 50 millilitres of water to a pan, and we'll let that bubble away. You can use frozen strawberries or fresh strawberries, whatever takes your fancy. We'll pour that mixture into a bowl once it's nicely softened. We're going to blend it together so it is smooth. Then we can add our gelatin, 12 grams of that. Give it a stir till it's very well mixed together. Then we pour it into our container and freeze it for around 30 minutes. Meanwhile, we'll make our chocolate cake. That's cake mixture, three eggs, oil, some milk, and we're going to whisk it all together. You can use ready-made cake mixture from the shop or make your own with a bit of self-raising flour, baking soda, and cocoa powder. Now we're going to lightly spray our cake tin with oil and add wax paper on the bottom to stop it from sticking. Then we add our chocolate cake mixture. Now this is going to bake in the oven at 180 degrees for around 30 minutes. While that is cooking away, we make our white chocolate mousse. That's four egg yolks and 120 grams of sugar. Blend it up. Next, we're going to add some corn flour. This is what's going to thicken it later on when we bubble away on the stove. And we can add two teaspoons of vanilla extract to give it a lovely flavor. And then we add 500 milliliters of milk to a pan. We heat that a little bit and add that to the rest of the mixture. Once that's all mixed together, we are two thirds of the way towards white chocolate mousse. Nice and smooth, we're going to add the whole mixture back to our cooking pot. Now here comes the time consuming part. We have to whisk away for quite a while until the texture thickens up and becomes a mousse-like texture. Nice and thick and gloopy. At that point, we can take it off the pan. We're going to add melted white chocolate, 150 grams. If you want to be interesting, you could even add some food coloring. Why not? 12 grams of gelatin to that as well. 
and whisk it up till it's very, very well mixed and smooth. Now we're going to add 500 millilitres of whipping cream and whisk it till it's very thick and gloopy. And we'll add the rest of our mixture to the whipping cream. Once that has been stirred, so you see there's a lot of stirring involved in this part of the process, but look, we have this absolutely delicious white chocolate mousse. We can stick it in a food bag or a piping bag, a food bag where you can just cut the end off to make a nozzle. You can squirt it into your baking tin so that it's ready to put your frozen strawberry jelly on top. Now we're going to use a piping bag to squirt around the edges of the jelly and over the top. Take your time with this and be very generous with your helping of white chocolate mousse. We love a bit of white chocolate mousse. We're going to just smooth over the top with a spatula because we want to now add our chocolate cake. Just final touches and voila, there we go. We freeze that for 30 minutes. Meanwhile, we're going to make our topping. Sugar, cocoa powder, sweetened condensed milk. Now we add 100 millilitres of water to the cooking pot and stir it as it's heating, making sure it's nice and smooth. Now we might have a few lumpy bits of cocoa powder in the bottom, so we're going to pour it through a sieve onto a bowl of chocolate buttons. We've used dark chocolate. It gives it a lovely dark brown colour. We're going to blend this up till it's absolutely smooth. Look at that lovely shiny mixture. This is our chocolate glaze. That glaze then gets poured over the rest of our cake. We recommend that you put your cake on a stand high up over a baking tray. That's because obviously as we pour the chocolate glaze it's going to drip. So we're going to just smooth out the bottom and get rid of all those dripping pieces. Next we're going to get some broken up chocolate and we're going to just bludge it on there around the edges alongside the bottom very nice finishing touch and of course it hides any dripping chocolate glaze. Now we can add a special touch with a few strawberries on top, halved with the leaves still on. We like a bit of green and red colour on our dark chocolate cake. Delicious, look at that. Chocolate glazing makes this cake look amazing. Mm.